Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture. So now we will try to see what are the uh, income generating domain that you can have in the construction industry after you have at least two to three years of experience. First thing is you can start your own construction business. Let's say you have at least two to three years of experience as a site engineer. So you can start your own construction business after some time. You can take up the projects. You can do the execution of the projects. Parallelly, since it's a construction industry, you require everyone. You require a paint industry. You require a, a cement industry. You require uh, all the sanitary, the plumbing people and all. So since all these are interlinked, let's say if you have a certain extra money and all, you can slowly start a small, you know, a paint uh, dealership or even you can start with a tile dealership and all. So what will happen? Let's say you got a project. So you are the one who will take up the construction. So along with the, once the RCC construction is done, I mean, once the civil construction is done, for the interior, you require the tile, you require the paint and all. So why should I allow the, why should you allow the client to go to some somebody else and get those things done? Why don't you start your own paint shop in a small uh, uh, scale? And later, if you feel it's going to work out, you can expand it. So this way, what will happen? The client will take everything from you. Since he's taking everything from you, whatever profit you are going to get, you can even reduce that profit so that what will happen, the profit margin you can increase. Okay, let's say if you are only doing the construction, you say you will take around 10% of profit. But if you, 10% uh, of that. But let's say you, if you tell the client, no, if you take the paint and other materials also from my shop, instead of 10%, I can make it to around 7%. So you're getting my point, no? So that way you can uh, even think of doing, of course, when I say you can think of doing, initially you cannot do all these things. It has to go step by step. First, you can do the execution work. After some time, you can slowly uh, plan of, you know, putting up this paint uh, shop or even paint dealership. This way you can plan. Second option, what you have is a survey. Again, see, these things I would not suggest you. If you are a, someone who has a B.Tech graduate, who is a B.Tech graduate or is an M.Tech graduate, uh, Working as a surveyor is not for you. It is only for the diploma people. It is for ITI people, someone who has just finished their 10th pass, 11th pass, 12th pass. For them, this is a job. But yeah, uh, but if you learn how to operate this instrument, it has a good scope also. Or when you start your own consultancy, uh, if there is no one who can operate this uh, machine, if you learn how to operate this total station machine, then you can help people or a client uh, in doing the marking of their uh, home like the center line layout and all you can do of course surveying is a good field again i'm not uh, telling that you should not become surveyor or it's a low field ha, but the technical knowledge or the things what you learn learn in the engineering college is not required to become a, a surveyor for that you can just take a two or three months of training or you can just finish your uh, diploma or you can finish your 12th and you can become this thing you don't require to do four years of engineering to become a surveyor. Okay. That is a bit. But again, all, all field is required for us because unless and until you don't do surveying, you cannot start the project. If you want to plot the boundary layout and each and everything, you require a survey for each and every point, for each and every uh, element to be casted on the side to check the level, you require a survey. Okay. Fine. After that, next is you can start your own uh, structural consultancy. Let's say you have two to three years of experience uh, as a structural engineer. Then after two to three years of experience, you can start your own consultancy. You can tie up with the architect. So the architect will do the plan. And you being a structural engineer can help him doing the designing of the footing, column, beam, slab, staircases, prepare the structural designing and all. So that thing also you can start. Again, when you have a plan to start, you should know someone who, who you should have a contact with the architect. Because usually people approach architects initially to get their plans done. An architect will have a architect will have a good contact with the structural engineer. So the designing part will be done by the structural engineer. Then if you have worked in the estimation and building department, maybe you work for one or two years, then you can start your own consultancy. You can help people uh, get their house or building estimation done. You can ha help them in raising the bills and all. You can do that also. Then if you learn Vastu, Vastu is very important. Whatever building you put on this planet Earth, you have to put it according to the Vastu. If you don't do that, then after some time, you'll invite trouble and all. So there's something directions and all. So this is a plan what we have. We have directions like north. We have south direction. We have west direction. We have east direction. We have northeast direction. We have southeast and all. So based on that, the placement of your rooms will be decided. 
if it is a kitchen it will be in southeast it, if it is a puja um, room it will be in northeast if it is a master bedroom it will be in southwest so that is how it is so even if you learn that uh, you can you can have you can earn good money also because nowadays everybody want a house according to the vastu okay that is how it is then even uh, you can do a bank valuation let's say uh, because bank will sometimes give loans uh, to people uh, sometimes they want to uh, you know uh, give loans to the properties and all so you should know what is the value of that property so you require a civil engineer there who will do the valuation of that property and all okay then uh, you can take up the freelancing projects like this is a autocad plan you can help people to prepare their plans and all with the help of autocad revit software you can do the 3d elevations of that with the help of google sketchup software but again it requires time initially you will not be able to do if you have two to three year of experience of at least two year of experience then slowly slowly you can get into this field also then even you can start with the real estate also so uh, real estate let's say somebody wants to do a somebody wants to uh, buy a 3 bhk home let's say somebody wants to buy it in bangalore in a city called bangalore in india maybe mumbai or delhi uh, so let's say let's say the cost of that apartment is 1 cr so if you help those people to uh, take the flat and you get a commission of 2 to 3% let's say 1 to 2% also you can roughly earn around 2 to 3 lakh rupees if you sell one apartment now how do you sell that say everything is related to construction so when you are selling a flat to anyone you should know what is the carpet area what is built up area what is super built up area uh, then you should know what, through what technologies the structure has been made, whether it's a normal frame structure or whether it's a flat slab system, if it's a commercial or if it is a uh, high rise building, whether it has, whether my one, my one technology has been used or not. Uh, what is What are the nearby locations? And you should know if they take a house here, uh, what all benefits they are going to get, whether in a school, colleges, hospitals are nearby or not. So these are things which you should be knowing. Of course, it requires a lot of research. People from non-engineering, non-civil engineering background are selling flats like anything, all the buildings and all. So someone who is from engineering, civil engineering, you even you people know better than those people. They don't even know what is the grade of concrete which has been used into the structure. They don't know what are the uh, thickness of the plaster that is used in the structure. Okay, But you being a civil engineer, you have a knowledge of all these things. You can sell better i would say okay selling is not bad if you're selling something to someone and if the intention is right so everybody is selling let's say i'm i'm, I'm sure i'm I, i'm explaining you end of the day i'm going to sell my course but if my course is really going to benefit you then that's not a wrong thing so the problem is that word has become like that people don't like anyone to sell but whatever you do in your life every day you're selling yourself you're selling yourself let's say you're working in a company you are showing off your work you're selling yourself to your boss let's say if somebody is running a business he's selling his products so everybody is selling end of the day everybody is selling that's it no so selling is not bad but the intention behind that should be good uh, but if your intention is to uh, you know uh, make fraud if your intention is to uh, i mean if the intention is not good then that is not good but if my intention is good then you can do anything okay Next is you can even become a PMC consultancy or you can do a consultancy for third party. Let's say Coca-Cola company wants to do the uh, Coca-Cola manufacturing plant in India. So Coca-Cola doesn't know how the construction should be done, but they are going to give a work to some other company. Let's say the company name is A, but Coca-Cola should make sure the company A, A is doing the work in a right way. So Coca-Cola will hire one more company called as company B that's called as PMC, Project Management Consultancy. They will check whether the company A is doing the right work or not. And these people will directly direct uh, report to Coca-Cola company. Okay, you're getting my point. No? So this way you can even you can work in a Project Management Consultancy department. In the same way, let's say you're doing a small house. I mean, somebody is doing a construction of the house in your area. Uh, maybe those, because you know this construction sector is an unorganized sector, at least in India. Anyone without a formal degree uh, can come and start the construction. And as a result of that, the quality is not maintained and all. Now, let's say you're an engineer who have a good knowledge about the building execution and all. So you go and speak with the client like you're, you're giving the work to that contractor, but you don't know whether he's doing it in the right way or not. I have two to three years of experience in the construction. So I will look after the things and I'll report to you directly so that since you're building a house, I'll make sure that according to the quality, the contract is going to do a work. So this way, if you to go and tell them, like, I can take care of this, I can do a site supervision, 
So even from there, you can start collecting the money. End of the day, if you have something here only, you can do. That's how it is. Okay. So these are the different options where you can start to earn an additional source of income after you have at least, let's say, two to three of experience is required. As a fresher, it's a little difficult. People will not believe, you know. You require something to show them these are the things what I've done. Right. So that is why you work for at least uh, two to three years, at least two, two years. And after that, slowly you can plan all these things. You can try to get into all this field. That's it. So I hope uh, you enjoyed my lecture up to here and you got an idea like what are the different uh, income generating domain that you have in the construction industry. Apart from this, there might be some other field also, which I did not add. But if you know something, you can do you can do that also. Not a problem. Got it? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.